Hello everyone, today I want to talk about economy in Palestine. First of all, Palestine have four sector economy, which is agriculture sector, industrial sector, service sector, and also construction sector. Unfortunately, these four sector have faced the challenges, which is the movement and access restrictions, violent attack and a slow pace of post-conflict reconstructions continue to regret economic conditions in Gaza Strip, which is the smaller of the two areas comprising the Palestinian territories. This is because Israel controls become more restrictive after Hamas seized control of the territory in June 2007. Under Hamas control, Gaza has suffered from rising unemployment, elevated poverty rates, and a sharp contractions of the private sector which had relied primarily on export markets. So now we are talking about the economic sector in Palestine. First of all on the agriculture sector. Agriculture is one of the most important and oldest sector of the Palestinian economy as many crops are produced to fulfill the needs of the populations and active food security and economic growth. Agriculture cover about 1.854 million acres or 31% of the total area of the West Bank and the Gaza Strips, 91% of which is the West Bank and 9% in the Gaza Strips. Besides that, the agriculture sector's role is not limited to economic and social aspect but also is a key player in protecting the land from confiscations and settlements activities and guaranteeing the protections and the legal right to the use of water. Besides than that, the agriculture sector in Palestine faced many problems and obstacles including those caused by the Israel occupations and related to natural resources and and administ administrative laws. Then, we go through to the service sector. The Palestinian service sector has grown substantially recently, contributing greatly to the Palestinian economy. The sector covers all the real estate activities, banking, telecommunication, insurance, transportation and distribution service, and hotel and restaurants among the others. So this picture shows the health service that provided by the Palestinian services. Last but not least, on the construction sector. The construction sector constitutes one of the key Palestinian economic activities in terms of contributions to, to GDP and employment and in terms of its direct impact on many other economic activities. Besides that, most economic reports indicate a significant growth in the construction and real estate investment sector in Palestine. Next, we we'll talk about industrial sector in Palestine. Industrial sector is second most important sector. It contributes 13.1% of the GDP, amounting to nearly $1 billion. Besides that, handicrafts are the largest industrial sector and include trade such as textile, footwear, ceramic, pottery, olive wood, shell shell, colored glass, soap, leather tanning, and so on. But this industrial sector suffers from a wide variety of challenges, including the Israel obstacle. So overall, the conditions of Palestinian economy from this picture was stagnated, which is per capita income further fell and employment increased, poverty dependent, import and export are unbalanced and the environmental tools of occupations rose in the occupied Palestinian territory. So according to the report, the reason behind the near collapse of the Palestinian economy are the expansions and tightening grips of occupations, suffocations of Gaza's local economy and 6% drop in donor support between 2017 and 2018, deterrations of the security situations and also lack of confidence as a result of bleak political horizon.
Hello Doctor. Now, I am going to explain the relationship between Israel and Palestine in trade and economies and how important Israel role towards the economy of Palestine. First, the economy relation between Israel and Palestine. Based on my desktop research, Israel desire a strong economic system for Palestine. The Israel government has created and distributed areas to expand Palestine trade system which includes trade and export purchases, information specific economy sector and transportation. Despite the conflict between these two sides, Israel encouraged the Palestinian investment in Israel which the government has promised to provide risk insurance and long-term visiting permits to the to the Palestinian investor. In 2015, Israel and Palestinian administration in the West Bank continue impartial economy relations including limited bilateral trade, transfer of goods from and to Palestine via Israel where Israel collect high import tax and transfers to Palestinian when they are using the Israel ports. Basically, we can assume that the Palestinian economy is overwhelmingly dependent on Israel. With the peace treaties signing between Israel and Jordan and also Egypt, the economic cost of Palestine was huge when ongoing conflict occurs, which is known as the Intifada. Next is the Israel-Palestine threat, which is the threat imbalance. Israel is the largest Palestinian trade partner and also the largest importer for Palestinians with almost 91% Palestinian is import are from Israel markets and Israel has been the almost exclusive destination for Palestinian export with more than 90% of total Palestinian export of goods. Israel-Palestinian trade in goods is radically imbalanced in favor of Israel. The imbalance in trade is in good is even more extreme in relation to non-Israeli markets. However, the Palestinian Authority is still among the most important export market for Israel, with total close to 3.5 billion in goods export between 2014 to 2016, which also accounts 6% in total Israeli, Israeli export of goods. But the threat between Israel and Palestine are heavily influenced by security and political development between these two because the threat will drastically decrease when conflict happens between Israel and Palestine. Okay, for the introduction is since October 2000, Israel and Palestine in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip has been entangled in a bloody confrontation that claimed thousands of casualties between both parties. After much mediation by the international community, the crisis show no sign of slowing down. It means no solution for this issue. Actually, its intensity is constant increase by the escalation dynamic of one side and increased escalation from the other side. Naturally, Palestinians have no voice or input in establishing regional economic dynamic. At that time, the Palestine Authority leadership is still not strong enough in that region and remain its influence is mostly from the outside of the region. It means the Gaza Strip. As the winner of great power, Israel decided to integrate the economy. The West Bank and the Gaza Strip itself create an economy unit. It comes from the agriculture sector. Israel is a major decision maker in economic from what is happening in Palestine. With zero input from the Palestinian, creating a big hole in rebuilding the Palestinian economy. From a Palestinian perspective, the agriculture is a major sector of the economy. After the 1967 war, Palestinians lost control over the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. This means 
losing their main source of income, which is the basis of Palestinian dependence on Israel. Because of this, Israel is an advanced manufacturing and agricultural sector increasing the scale of economy due to its increasing investment. Their demand the main power supplied by the Palestinians to replace the Israel laborer. Instead, the Israel workforce has shifted from the traditional sector turning to modern industry. The Israel economy can have a relatively elastic supply of labor low salary. At the same time, there is a significant improvement demand for the modern sector products. However, Palestinian agricultural production declined. In Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Here I will be presenting for solutions on Israel's roles in economy. It is undeniably that Israel's major country has been so long imposing economic sanctions against Palestine. These economic restrictions were successfully manipulated by Israel. Since 2006, Israel has been imposing restrictions in the Gaza Peninsula, inhabited by nearly 2 million Palestinian residents and many affected sectors including the economy. Since the beginning of Intifada, Israel has imposed a total closure of the Palestinian territories that causes dislocation of the Palestinian economy with huge losses of income. There are several resolutions for both countries, particularly the solutions to Israeli roles in terms of economy. To revive the process, the U.S. administration needs to take a more even-handed approach. A new balanced American position, long way in cementing the road toward creating a new peace process that avoids the mistakes of Oslo, especially those in economic relations. Next, security is the most important issue to Israel due to the increasing trend to Israeli civilians posed by Hamas and other military Islamist Palestinian groups. Israelis do not trust Palestinians and are thus unwilling to make any positions that will further compromise Israel's security. The involvement of other states as reliable counterparts will strengthen Israeli willingness to compromise if they have reason to believe that a stable and adhere agreement is achievable. Moreover, there should be stability in the Gaza Strip in order to implement these solutions. All rockets must be disposed of and tunnel digging shall cease. Support shall be created in the Gaza Strip and the Rafa province. First off, the economy in Palestine is currently in a crisis because of investment collapse and import ban that is placed on them by Israel. Palestinian is forced to depend on Israel's economy as they fall deeper into poverty, face mass unemployment and greater food insecurity. The Israeli blockade has not given Palestine's local economy a chance to recover. This is especially true for Gaza. Export from Gaza are almost completely banned and imports are incredibly restricted and the flow of all but most basic humanitarian goods has been suspended for years. That is why it is crucial for Palestine to get Israel to lift some of those restrictions on a ban and the only way to do it peacefully is through negotiation that it prioritize on humanitarian goods. With that solution in mind, it will hopefully improve the living condition in Palestine. The next biggest problem for Palestine is the unemployment issues. The unemployment rate in the occupied Palestinian territory has risen to worrying rates. The Palestinian labor market has deteriorated to lows which concerns women and youth especially. With the absence of opportunity for young people, uh, most of them are drove to work outside and most of them choose to work in Israel 
because of the average pay is much more beneficial for them. In Gaza, almost every second worker is in unemployed and almost two-thirds of women workers are jobless. The Israeli blockade has paralyzed much of the economic activity in as in. As such, the capita incomes have fallen behind the levels of early 1990s. A solution for this is Palestine should initiate a new joint economic and industrial project with Israel as to create a new local business and this will promote job growth. Cooperating with Israel will at least make sure that workers can return back to Palestine easily rather than working in other foreign countries where they can easily be exploited, for example, like having their passport being taken away or not being, uh, not being provided with proper health care. The last worrying problem for Palestine is their dependence on Israel's economy. Currently, Palestinian economy is highly dependent on Israel's decision. It is especially true right now with the COVID-19 outbreak. The one who is affected the most by this is the Palestinian workers that is working in Israel. The number of Palestinian workers in Israel with official permits are over 150,000 while uh, 60,000 work illegally. Each Palestinian get an average daily income of 20, well, no, 250 Israeli shekels, which in terms of Malaysian ringgits is about 310 ringgit uh, and 9 cents. The suspension from work in Israel in the wake of COVID-19 has deprived 10 of thousands of families of cash. The, though unlike the West Bank, um, Unlike the West Bank, the number of Gazan workers and merchants working in Israel only amount to 5,000 people, hence their limited contribution to the local economy. The solution for this is to take practical measures to decrease Palestinians' dependence on the Israeli economy in the future as they are not forced to only depend on one country for import. For example, what, uh, what Palestine can do is to trade with Egypt more. And of course, in the future of after COVID-19 is far behind them, begin a campaign to subsidize the purchase of Palestinian products in order to reduce the demand for Israeli products. <laughs>